Okay, so back in Flex, we're going to add some um, event handling in the FD test project to basically you know, highlight how you might actually set up event handling out of this default button group. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an MX, and this is in the, in the, in the source side, um, script block. And then once we close this, it nicely auto-completes for us. So um, let's add a um, couple of import statements in here for the things that we're going to use. So the first one we're going to use is uh, an MX control um, button. And the next one um, is an, an import MX controls um, alert to display something when the user clicks something on the on the, the control. Okay. So we need to make a couple changes here to establish initialization when this um, project is loaded. So the first thing we need to do is add an initialize uh, statement to our application. So um, there's an init event fired. Um, we're going to create one called init under the initialize event. And in here, we're going to create a uh, private function called init. And that references directly uh, to the initialize statement from the application as it starts. So it's going to return void. And in here, what we want to do, um, just just for default, uh, we're going to reference our, uh, our, uh, our object here. So actually, one of the first things we need to do is create an ID for this. So let's just call this um, ID default button. We'll call it default you know, beat button. We'll spell it out group. And uh, that gives us an instance uh, to uh, an instance reference to actually play with. So, what we're going to do here in the initialize or the init function, um, we're going to reference that. So let's go default button group, and we're going to add an event listener. And uh, if you're somewhat familiar with, um, uh, let's do a mouse event and on a click. And then we're going to create a new function that doesn't exist yet. Let's call it uh, on mouse click event. And let's uh, terminate this. Okay, so um, I think actually I gave it too many in parentheses there. There we go. Um, what we've done is we've basically established that our default boot button group has a, an event. Uh, when it receives uh, a mouse click event to actually fire this function. And it doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. Call it uh, another private function uh, on mouse click event. And then um, we're going to give it uh, the mouse event type. This is uh, event handling requires a certain format uh, for the function definitions. And it's going to be the event type uh, followed by void. <coughs> So uh, in here, let's just create, um, uh, we're referencing it, but I'll, I'll spell it the whole thing out. Let's go mx.controls um, alert. And the, the function off of this is actually show. Oops. And then we're going to, the, for the text of this, let's actually use the target. Uh, the, so this event that comes in is an E. Let's use the target of that, which is hopefully going to be the button that we're clicking. And then um, since we know that this is going to be a display object, this is a, um, a we can um, we can actually just use the name of it. And so in a real application, you're going to be want a little more stringent about checking and casting the type that you're taking in. But uh, we know that uh, this is limited to uh, a, the default button group, which only contains a couple of buttons. <coughs> so um, uh, the second parameter on this is just a title for the for the alert box. So let's just say clicked and terminate the function here. Okay, so now that our code changes are in, let's save it and see if we have any errors. Hopefully not. Uh, does not look like it. So uh, let's actually run it again and see how this uh, behaves now that we've added an event listener. We've actually added an initialize statement that calls a uh, default button group and adds an event listener that uh, basically tells it that on a mouse click, uh, show an alert box that gives the name of the, the object that was clicked with uh, a title of clicked. So let's run it here. Okay, so there we go. 
So we click that and it uh, gave us a link button and then uh, default button when it clicked. So we now have um, you know, some action uh, that uh, we can act upon when the user clicks a button. Okay, so back in Flex, um, one of the last things that uh, we want to do is just show how to modify some of the components, uh, elements of the components within within the component itself. So, um, for example, you saw that it was a cancel button with a default OK button. Well, let's say we wanted to change the text on one of the buttons. Um, we could do that um, quite simply by just reaching into the default button group. So what we're going to do um, is actually and this is a bit of a, of a shorthand way to do this. Uh, what you may want to do instead is actually uh, create a, an accessor method or property off your component. Um, that's a little more advanced. So what we're really what we're going to do right now is we're just going to actually cast our default button group, um, our default button, uh, that's, uh, as a button. And notice this is uh, um, all casted together. And what we're going to do is just modify the label. Oops. Um, I'll set that equal to, um, I don't know, let's say submit. Uh, we wanted to change it from uh, OK to submit. And that, a really simple uh, single line of code to actually just change the text in our button. Um, but like I mentioned, you may want to just go back to the component itself and create nice, uh, verifiable, clean ways to change the, the contents of the component and uh, kind of Encapsulation encapsulates the uh, the code a bit better and makes it a little more defendable. So let's actually run this and, and see the change firsthand. Let's save it first off and then run it again. Okay, so now you notice that it no longer says OK, but it says submit. So that's a that's a shorthand way to actually make a quick change to the contents of that component.